Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another exciting episode of First Impression Friday, where I review an entire sewing pattern collection. Um, this time, we are going to be looking at Simplicity's new spring collection. Um, they just released this, I don't know, maybe a couple days ago. And so we're going to look at all of these patterns together, and I'm just going to kind of just talk you through them. Oh, no, these images are like very squat. Um, talk you through them, give you my, you know, just kind of general opinions. We'll talk about fit a little bit, different fabrics that you can use, um, and just, you know, help give you some ideas if you uh, want to make some of these patterns yourself. So, like I said, something's wrong with the photos here. All these ladies are like too short, um, but let me just roll over them. Beautiful, right? Okay, good. So this is a Mrs. Slip dress in three lengths. Sizing here is 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. So that's still considered misses, but we'll look at the sizing when we get to the back of the envelope and see kind of exactly what that means. Um, but this is a slip dress that's sophisticated and sleek. Open back. Fun. Slip dress comes in many knee and floor length. Straps are pulled through loops and tie at back. Not my favorite. I'll explain why. Um, dress includes invisible zipper closure at the center back. All right, let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, so it looks like a center front seam, a bit of a sweetheart neckline, um, spaghetti straps, the three links that they talk about. Okay. That all looks good. This orange color is everything to me right now. Orange and purple right now, I'm just loving so much. We also have little bust starts here for those of you that are a little bit more chesty. Um, it also allows for the dress to kind of be cinched in at the waist a little bit more, even if you don't have a really full bust. And then there's the floor length version. Let's see the back already. Goodness, bearing the lead. Okay. I wonder if it's supposed to drag like that. Or if that's just really long on her. Um, okay, so here are my thoughts about this little contraption here. It is very difficult to tie a pretty bow by yourself in the middle of your back. <laughs> Am I right? Um, it's just really tricky. And I, I understand that doing it this way would eliminate having to worry about strap length at all and you can raise it and lower it and you know do all your heart's desire but I would rather have I don't know I don't uh, yeah I think I would just rather have a dedicated strap easy enough to convert you would just instead of doing the loop here this is as far as I can zoom in but instead of doing the loop here you would just sew the strap into that and then your back I guess you could keep that little v there but it might also be cool to just close that up yeah, you could play around with it like on a dress form or something. It just it just gets so tricky to get on and off. And that, for me, is a big enough hurdle for me to not wear something if it's just like, oh, my God, I don't want to have to fuss with that thing trying to get it tied. That's my only grievance. So if you're like that, it, like, you know, where <laughs> your mind just sort of the simplest task your mind cannot overcome some days, or I don't know if you're just like not very flexible, if you have arthritis, like all of that comes into play. I don't, it's hard to say just looking at this, if this is the kind of dress that you would be able to just slip on after you get it tied once, if you could just leave it like that. Um, it's really hard to tell. There is an invisible zipper here. So maybe, but this not may not be wide enough, the, the little back opening. Okay, so here is our um, back of the envelope. Um, we're going to talk about suggested fabrics in here. We'll talk about measurements a little bit um, and like ease. And if I see any issues um, with sort of how much ease they're allowing, mostly being too, too much. Okay. So they're recommending um, kind of like lightweight wovens, not well, yeah. So chambray, cotton, linen, and silky types. So you could go everything from like a polyester, a rayon chalet, all the way up to um, maybe four or five ounce chambray or something like that. Um, there is some interfacing. I'm assuming there's a facing for the neckline all the way around. Um, so you need some lightweight fusible for that. And again, this is eight to 26. 
And that means bust measurements of 31 and a half up to 48 and hip measurements of 33 and a half up to 50. Okay, so certainly not the most size inclusive, but more so than some of the others that stop at like 20 or 22. Um, and then this one, I mean, kind of all the measurements matter, but it looks like the bust has two inches of ease, the waist has five, and the hips have five also. So yeah, very close fitting. Um, body skimming, not, you know, body con, but body skimming. Um, those numbers all sound good to me. Five inches at the hip seems right. Five inches at the waist seems right. Two inches at the bust. Yeah, all that seems pretty spot on. Uh, but, but also because this pattern has so few seams, um, or actually it has the extra center front seam. So there's actually four of them. So side seams, center front and center back. Oh, I didn't even notice this. There is like a train. That is like a full on gown. That's really pretty. Especially if you made it in like crepe back satin or something like, I don't know, really beautiful. It could be like gown material, like red carpet. Um, uh, but okay, so there's four seams. So if you needed to add an inch, that's only a quarter of an inch. Wait, no, that's an eighth of an inch per seam line because you double them up and then they go all around four times. So it's really easy to make adjustments on a dress like this. So, and same thing for taking them out. If you need to nip and tuck here and there, you could do it literally nipping and tucking. You don't have to take big chunks out because there are so few seams. All right, now we've got this pant. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Skirt and pants. Women's knit skirt and pants in two lengths. This is sizes 20 to 28 and then 30 to 38. I'm assuming they have a Mrs. Virgin as well, which we will see here shortly. Oh, this is their one of their one hour patterns. I haven't seen one of these in so long, like decades probably. Um, these are easy to sew knit skirts and pants are must-have staples for your wardrobe. View A is an asymmetrical midi skirt. View B is a long skirt with side slit. View C and D are flare pants with hip patch pockets. Pants are available in two lengths. One hour sewing machine time only. I'm surprised it takes an hour at the machine to be honest with you. Okay. Knit pants. So we're talking like pull on pants. Okay. Like I'm thinking, I'm kind of picturing the pajama pant. Remember that from a few years ago? Um, this one does look a little bit more sleek. I gotta say, I wouldn't be able to tell that that was any kind of knit, especially if she had like a shirt on that came, you know, over the waistband. The waistband is kind of the most telling part of it. Here's the skirt with a little asymmetrical situation. There's a long midi skirt. It's like a tube, right? With a, um, slit up the side. Then there's the flare with two pockets. There's this one that has this little thing here that also might be a little bit cropped. Yeah, I mean, not much to these, right? I think there's probably like one inch elastic or something in this waistband, maybe done like a facing. Um, but the fit looks really good. They even put her in heels. It makes me think it's a little bit long. Um, stretch knits only, such as jersey, rib, spandex blends, and then see pick a knit rule. I wish they would just put the percentages on there already. Um, because you just, I mean, unless you're, unless you have the pattern in your hand, you can't tell. Um, you can't order online until you get the pattern. All right. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. This is not a revolutionary pattern here, but I think they're definitely trying to tap into that market of, um, What's Kim Kardashian's brand? I forgot. Skims, um, especially with the rib knit suggestion. suggestion um, I was kind of expecting to see some kind of like French terry or something in there, but they didn't go that direction at all. They went lighter weight. So I don't know that I would want a jersey pant necessarily. I mean, maybe. I, had, I do have an ITY knit like wide leg pant that I really love. Very simple. I don't know. You can make these as 
you know, make them to your needs, depending on your fabric. If there's a print on your fabric, it can really dress them up. You know, if there's a slight sheen to your fabric, it can also be a little bit dressier. Um, or you can dress it down doing rib knits. That's basically like pajamas. Um, I wonder if they're going to have like a top that is meant to go with these because that would be really fun to have like a set. All right, so you need, yeah, one inch elastic is in the waistband. And then here are your sizes. There is no bust. The waist, because there's elastic, I'm going to ignore that and only focus on the hip, which goes from 44 to 62. And the there is no ease at the hip at all, which means they're not going to be stretched around you, but they're also not going to be loose. They're going to be like exactly fitted to your body. Um, which for the hip, I think feels that, that's fine for a pant like this. Um, you can see on hers. Yeah, it's close fitting all around through the hip here. That also helps keep them up. Um, you would just have to worry a little bit about if your fabric stretches as you wear it. Um, and then of course, making sure you're taking super accurate measurements of yourself. All right, so there are the line drawings again. I can't honestly say I'm in love with the patch pocket. You know, I might just toss that out altogether. But, but yeah, really straightforward and easy. Perfect for a beginner. Okay, next, let's see, actually, this might be that same skirt paired with that top. All right, it doesn't look like, I wish that they put them side by side, which I don't think they're gonna do. Okay, so we'll come back. Oh no, it's right here, duh. Okay, interesting. All right, so here's the Mrs. version of the same pattern. Everything should be the exact same. They just sewed a different view for this one, which I actually really appreciate. Um, so you can see two versions. We saw the pants, these pants, and now we're looking at this little asymmetrical skirt. I mean, honestly, the skirt is way cuter made up than it is in these little drawings. I, at first, was like, it felt kind of like, oh, matronly, like, like grandma, I guess. I don't know. Grandma is such a bad word to use because there's so many cool, young, hip grandmas these days. I don't know. It just felt very, like, ugh, not this. <laughs> this lime green fitted, you know, super, super like Caribbean. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to the Bahamas. You know what I mean? It feels very tropical, um, which I wasn't getting from that originally. So I'm glad that they made this version. I guess I wasn't picturing it being so fitted. Um, and that's really what's making the difference. It's also got this really beautiful drape. I'm, it makes me think that the pattern pieces are not just rectangular, that something else is going on there. And again, all of this should be the exact same. Jersey, ribs, spandex, yep. This is size four to 22. So the hip goes from 33, no, 31 and a half up to 46 on this one. Um, and then the same zero inches of ease. Yeah, and a little one yard wonder ish, one and some change on your fabrics there. Um, yeah, that could be really cool. I got a skirt like this from Aerie on clearance over the winter. Um, and I wore it in like a, I don't know, a real TikTok thing. And so many people were asking about a pattern. And now I don't have to make my own. <laughs> Yay. Um, and I did get some like, pretty like uh, rib knit from Joanne that's a little bit like sweatery. It's like a little bit fuzzy um, a few weeks ago. So that might be one of those that you just pick up and just make it, you know, in a day. All right. Again, I think that this skirt is the skirt from the pattern we just looked at. Well, no, here's another pattern. Golly, that looks exactly like the one we just saw, right? Like they just, they could have just I don't know. It looks the same, except this one has a casing and the other one has more of like a folded over facing situation. Very close though. But so you can even easily use this top with that pattern if you want to get a set like this. Okay, let's look at it though. So this is a Mrs. Comes in alphanumeric sizing, small to 2X. 
um, create these easy to sew knit tops and skirts for Mrs. Size small to 2X. Fitted tops have cap sleeves, high mock neckline, and optional ruched sides. Skirt with elasticized waistband and figure hiking fit come in midi length with side slit or mini length with ruched detail. So this could go, I'm seeing like sporty. I'm seeing like athleisure, truly. Like, yeah, something along those lines. I do wonder how long it is, like how long is A really? You know what I mean? Like how far, does it come over the waistband or is it also a crop top? This little beautiful cowl, I think, is a good contrast to showing the midriff. You know, it's a good balance, like all covered up up here, but showing a little bit of skin here. And I mean, yeah, this these skirts, like I said, they made theirs a little bit more elegant. Look at this lavender. I told you, orange and purple everywhere. Um, but you could also do something with this ruched situation. I For whatever reason, my mind is also going to, like, refashioning like I'm imagining old sweatshirts with like the Nike logo or something I don't know my mind is like really taking this very sporty for some reason but that's how creativity works I guess but yeah that fit looks really good and this one's not nearly as fitted as the last one in the skirt area it's a little bit more roomy so if that's what you like you know a little bit more of a pencil skirt not fitted skirt um, this one might be your jam, but you can see that there are, naturally, this is not any fault of the pattern or anything else. It's not a fit issue. It's just naturally there are these wrinkles up here where the other one was a lot more smooth. Okay, so this one's calling for stretch knits only, such as bamboo, ITY, jersey, and rib knit. Now those inherently as a as a collection are a little bit more lightweight than the ones that were being recommended for the last pattern. And that kind of makes sense because the last one is so fitted. If it's too lightweight, it's almost like wearing tissue paper. Um, so it has to have some thickness to it. But that one, I I wonder which one needs more stretch. Probably that first one. And this one needs less because it's not as fitted. Um, you need, gosh, bias tape. Oh, these are for the tops. Bias tape, elastic, elastic, elastic. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then the top, yeah, it's the top has like three-ish inches of ease in the bust. That makes sense. The waist of the skirt has, yeah, like four or five inches maybe. And then... The hip of the skirts have 36, 33, 36, 33. So it looks like view C. Why would they be different? Why would they be different? They shouldn't be different. Hmm. Well, I'm assuming it's one of the two, 36 or 33. If it's the 33 and a half one, then that means also this skirt would not have any ease either. And I'm just not getting that vibe. So I'm going to say that it's a 36 inch ease because if you look, I mean, that's not nothing, right? Let's get back to the front of her. I don't know. Maybe it is nothing. It's really hard to tell. Yeah. We're going to have to get the pattern on this one to figure out what's going on, but this is where the bias tape goes and there's elastic, different elastics in here. All right. Oops. Go away, honey. Um, and more, there's more bias tape in here and that you feed, um, I guess like cording through or maybe more elastic. I don't know, but these should be the same. There's no reason why they should have different hip measurements. Yeah. Simple, straightforward, but can make a real impact, right? That looks really cute. Something you'd pay a lot of money for if you saw in a boutique somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, now we have sort of their hero image is what it's called in web design. Um, from the beginning of the video, remember that big picture that was going across the entire screen? That's what they're banking their money on this, um, this season. They're thinking that this is going to be like a big top seller. Um, and with the last season of Maisel coming out in a few weeks... All I can think about is <laughs> the 1950s and 60s whenever I see this, right? 
All right, so this is, and they do have a women's version also, but this is four to 12 and 12 to 20 on the size range. Button front dresses in three lengths, have princess seams, inverted pleats, and side seam pockets. View A, dress has a collar, yoke, and cap sleeves. View B, is a short dress with straps. View C, is a halter dress that ties in the back. So three different like yokes, I guess, for, you know, lack of a better term, three different things happening from the upper bust to the shoulder. You either have this one here with the collar and the gathers, you have a simple strap, or you have a halter. Um, so that's really fun. I like that they are thinking outside the box when it comes to the options and not just giving us length options or sleeve options. I mean, technically, this is a sleeve option, but you know what I'm saying? Like, instead of just making this longer, um, they really are giving us three, well, I would say two very different looking dresses and one that kind of looks the same as the other. Um, but box pleats, fit and flare. I mean, it's a classic silhouette that's been around forever and ever. Um, princess seams in this little bodice. I don't see why you couldn't not put a topper on at all and just have a strapless dress. Just know that you'll have to come up with some kind of closure up here because it is a button front. Or remove the button front. You know, you could do a lot of stuff with this. Yeah, tropical, easy breezy. I'm seeing a linen in that for sure. Yeah, classic. And then there's the back. Yeah, I mean, it fits her, right? Um, It might even be a little bit small, but I mean, I don't know if I'm loving this. It's like I know she does not have back boobs, but it's like her shoulder blades, because there's the gathering, kind of accentuates them a little bit. And again, I'm over analyzing because that's the type of video that this is. But um, that was my first thought when I saw this. That looks a little bit off. But yeah, that's just the design, you know, with the gathers and then this band hitting right below the shoulder blades. Another thing to look for on these is where the skirt is hitting, if that's at her natural waist or not. I think it's close. Hers might be a little bit higher up, but that is such a particular measurement that's so individualized based on the person that I'd, it would be a miracle if they were able to get that right even half the time using just random fit models and then their, you know, just, you know, sample size. Um, okay, so they're calling for your stable wovens. So batik, chambray, cotton, gauze, linen, silky types, all of that stuff. Um, silky types, I would say probably, obviously would be more difficult to sew with the button band and everything. I can't say that it would really add a lot to have it be super silky. In fact, I might even eliminate that as an option um, simply because you want this skirt to kind of stand up or stand out and the silky types would make it kind of fall in on you, which kind of defeats the purpose of this whole fit and flare situation. Um, but outside of that, I think you could do some really cool stuff also with like sheer fabrics. Like imagine this top bodice, this yoke done in like, I don't know, Swiss dot like mesh or like some kind of lace or you know I don't know it could be really pretty to do something really unique with that portion up there okay so these are going to be pretty close measurements the bust has two and a half yards of ease that makes sense the waist has two inches of ease and then they're not giving us hip measurements because it's just a flared skirt, so it's pretty much negligible. But yeah, it's close fitting from the waist up for sure. Let's look at the line drawings. Oh, there are the pockets. Um, of course, you guys, if you've been around for a minute, you know that if it's a pocket shape like this, like a teardrop, I will always convert it to one that is anchored in the waist seam. I have a video on how to do it. That's what my episode of, um, oh gosh, my PBS episode what is that show called? It just fell out of my head. I went and filmed a few episodes of a TV show that airs on PBS and so easy. That's so easy. It's so easy. Something like that. <laughs> um, it's not on the air. They're not making new episodes anymore. They lost um, their big sponsor. But anyways, before they did that, um, I went and I filmed um, a tutorial about converting teardrop pockets to ones that are anchored in the waist seam. So if you're here because you saw that, 
um, that will be familiar to you. If you've ever seen any of my sew alongs, <laughs> this should be familiar to you. And if you're new here, well, I don't do teardrop pockets. That's just the long and short of it. I don't like how they flop around. I don't like how they fall to the back, especially when you have this nice waist seam that you can anchor them into. So I would like to see that reflected in patterns going forward. It's just as a lazy, a lazy uh, technique, I think, to do the teardrop pocket when you have a waist seam to use. So, all right. Yep, that's that. Then we have, hopefully the women's version is here. So this one, they made the halter. You can see that on her. Fit is literally perfection. If they did not let her go home with this dress, that is a crime. Look how like the button band is not pulling apart at all. Absolutely incredible. Let's see. Let's see more of it. Yeah, they even use different um like illustrations in the women's version, like different fabrics for the illustrations, which is fun. Yeah, literally beautiful. I do feel like they must have raised the seam, the waist seam here. Look how much higher that is. It does kind of scoop down in the back on her. It happens. Um, it would be technically like technically it would be a sway back adjustment, even though I'm sure she doesn't have a sway back. It's just removing that little wedge out of the center back there. But yeah, stunning. Stunning. I hope she got to keep it. I used to follow some of the models that um, were on pattern covers. It was just so fun to see like all the different jobs that they took. But I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> okay, and all this should be the same. This one goes from 20 to 38 and has a bust of 42 to 60. I'm also assuming, assuming that the Mrs. Pattern has bust cups A, B, and this has bust cup C, D assuming. Um, so if you're a full busted gal and you're like in between sizes, like let's say you're a size 20, err on the side of getting the women's version because the cup will be better, uh, better fitted for you. And then you can take in the waist if you need to do that. I wouldn't do that if you're like a size four, but if you're like, you know, 16, 18, something like that, you could easily do that. Okay. And then there's the line drawings again, which we already saw. Okay, cool. Good. Pretty. That fit is just so inspiring. Okay, so now we have pajamas? Mrs. and women's shirt, pants, and halter top for the American Sewing Guild. What that means is all of the patterns that have this little ASG logo on it, a portion of the proceeds go to the American Sewing Guild to help keep that program going. Um, so this is Mrs sizes 10 to 18 and 20 to 28 so a good like midsection right it doesn't have four six and eight and it also doesn't have you know 30 to 36 but it's going to capture a lot of people in that mid range do we wish that all of them could go from four to 36 absolutely but if they can't they can only make one i do feel like this this size combo is the best. Relax fit button down shirt has collar, long sleeves with cuffs and back yoke with pleats. So a very traditional button down shirt, just done in a very relaxed way. Pull on pants, have elastic waistband and self ties. So think pajama pants, think scrubs. Um, and then there's a crop top, I'm sorry, cropped fitted halter top has cutout detail and O-ring that connects the bodice with loops. So that's the real exceptional part of this. This is just a button down that you have in your stash already. This is just a pajama pant pattern that you have in your stash already. This is the top that you'd be buying this pattern for if you have a large collection. If you don't have a large pattern collection, then you might not have any of these, but I hope they show us lots and lots of this because the fit on this also looks exceptional. I mean, that cup is holding her entire boob. And as you girls know, when you go shopping and ready to wear, 
that is the first thing to come out, right? It is falling out of all the sides and over the top and under the bottom and everywhere else. I've seen it, like, on you guys, like, out in public, out people on TV. Like, I know that the struggle is real getting cute tops like this for full busted gals. So, the fit on this one looks super promising. Yes for the serve. Thank you so much. Throwing that shirt off and serving us a real look here. Like I am fierce and fabulous and I know I look wonderful. I love that. So we've got some kind of like top stitching detail here on the band. Is there elastic in there? Maybe. Is it just a detail? Also maybe. We'll have to look at that. Here's the O-ring and the necktie ties onto that. There's also loops. It's kind of magical how they get that on there. Huh. And then there's, I'm assuming, also like kind of drawstring situation going into here as well. Now, the only, only thing that I'm going to point out here, and it's so small, and it probably is just because she was moving around a bunch, but there is a little bit of like a fold situation happening here where it's a little bit big. Could they like tuck that in, you know, pinch that into the waistband? Yes. But I also imagine that if I could just get my hands on it and like move it around a little bit, <laughs> that would go away too. It's not affecting the structure of it or anything. It's just one small, small little thing I want to point out. All right. So yeah, there's the top again. It's really cute as a line drawing too. There's the pants and then the top. Here's the back of the top. Okay. Yeah, again, I think... Honestly, now that I'm looking at the back, I think something's up with the height of this compared to her body. So I think that the waistband is having a tendency to ride up, which is causing that little gaping in the front and is causing this fold in the back. Again, I've said this before, but mostly plus size women have a shorter torso and fuller bust cups. So when you have a pattern, the, de the design, the height of the bodice needs to be shortened most of the time. Um, I'm a, I consider myself a midsize woman and I have to shorten almost every single big four sewing pattern by one or two inches. So that might be what's happening here is that this just really wants to sit at her waistline and whatever's in this little casing thing to make, give it the structure to hold everything up, um, is causing it to ride up a little bit. Pants wise, these look great. These look absolutely wonderful. Um, it looks like elastic through here. This is where your drawstring goes. And then I'm thinking nothing in this little area. But you could put more elastic in there if you wanted even more structure. There is a side seam pocket, I think, which looks good. It's not gaping too bad, especially for a curvy girl. So wovens, charmeuse, cotton blends, crepe de chine, gauze, lightweight linen blends. I'd be careful about linen because it does stretch out, but uh, also poplin um, and silky types, lightweight fusible. Did they say denim? Why isn't denim in here? I guess that would fall into, yeah, cotton blends maybe. Charmeuse seems like a choice. Again, because I'm really looking at this for just this little top, yeah, charmeuse and all of that for, and even the linen and all that, silky types for these two, but this, I don't know if I'd want silky types being the only thing between my girls and the world. Hmm. I'd have to think about that a little bit more. I would want something with like, like stretch sateen or like a little bit of give to it, I would think, for this top especially. These two whatever. Um, but this top, I would want a little bit of give. So 11, 11 buttons. No, 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 no. Oh, 11 buttons for the top. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Um, I was like, where are there 11 buttons? Um, elastic. And then your O-ring. Oh, a separating zipper also. Oh, that's how you get into that thing. It's not elastic. There's a little baby zipper in there. Okay. 
Um, so fit wise, this says we have seven and a half inches of ease in the bust. That just can't be right. Um, 20 in the waist. They must be measuring it pre elastic. Yeah. And then the hip, what are they saying for the hip? Um, five, yeah, four and a half or five. So that makes more sense. I'm a, that, those other two numbers concern me. I guess the bust for the top makes sense to have that much for this shirt, but not this. Do they have a C? No, they didn't give us fit a separate bust for C. So normally if there's like two tops or like, um, two pants or two, like a skirt and a short and they have both have waists or whatever, they'll do a waist, B waist, but they didn't do that for the bust here. That must've just been an oversight. So these numbers make sense for these two, but not this. So I don't know where we'd stand on that. I have no idea what the ease for that is or would be. Okay. So there's the button down and the short, the pants, which it does have inseam pockets. And then here's your little baby zipper that goes in here separating. So this whole thing comes apart. Yeah. Interesting. I, you know what, something like that is one of those things where I would find, and this is sort of counterintuitive for those of us that are like trying to sew because we don't want to, you know, add to the problem of ready to wear, but I would find something in some store somewhere and tr like try it on to see if that would even be comfortable. I'm just try to imagine like a woven bra. I don't know. It's super cute. The concept is great. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I don't really know how practical that is. So, okay, moving on. We have this little dress. I, just when I think, okay, we are moving on from gathered tears. Here's another gathered tear dress. So this is a Mrs. Dress, 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Uh, easy to sew tiered dress has elastic at waist gathers and shoulder tie straps. View A has V neckline. View B and C are one shoulder dresses. Like we've done this. Yeah. And you guys know if you've been watching these videos for a while also I'm not a fan of one shoulder dresses. I don't know what it is. Something about like a little chicken nugget that appears on us normal women over here. Like, where does that fat come from? Like, how do you get that there? Um, it is pretty. It just, it's like, okay, yeah. I've seen this a thousand times from the big four. So it doesn't feel new or fresh or exciting or anything for those of us that have been sewing for a minute. Probably if you're new to sewing though, you're like, oh, that that's so cool. I can make that. And I get that. That aspect is fun. But I don't know. I kind of want, you know, I expect the big four to give us new, you know, maybe update an old classic. This doesn't feel updated at all. And this little tie thing. Oh, gosh, give me a break. No, thank you. She had someone tie hers for her. So, of course, it looks perfect. Do you know what that looks like whenever I try and do it? Oh, that's an interesting photo. They don't normally take photos like that. Yeah, I imagine it's like really comfortable. So cotton blends, gingham, linen blends, poplin, seersucker, naturally. Um, I'm thinking like Swiss dot, like all of those like, you know, sheerish wovens. I think this would be really beautiful out of. Um, so lightweight fusible. You need elastic for the waistband and single fold bias tape for what? Oh, maybe the casing for the waistband six to 24. So, the, um, gosh, the waist is negligible because of the elastic. The hip is negligible because of the, the width of the skirt. So the bus is really the only thing that's even close to being fitted here. And it's not even really that fitted. Um, it has gosh, 14, 13 and a half inches of ease. 
that feels like a lot. Like, way too much. I was thinking closer to eight. So, again, yeah, that feels weird. Something about that feels not right. But if they're measuring based off of the... It's really... Well, no, the bus line is the bus line. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, the line drawings. Sometimes I'll look at the line drawings and I'm like, okay, I get it. That looks a little bit cuter. This, no, this still looks like a no. <laughs> a no for me. But that said, if I saw that in Target, I would pick that up and try that on in a heartbeat. So I don't know what that means. I guess it's a bit like that's what sewing is all about. Like what would you rather spend your time on rather than just like throwing money, you know, at it and just having something to wear immediately. Okay, look at this little number. So we've got a top skirt pants and shorts. Denim on denim on denim on denim. I kind of love it all. I'm excited. Okay, so this is 6 to 14 and 16 to 24. I think that they went with the two smaller sizes because this does feel a little bit more like a junior's type of pattern, which that's who would fit into um, not universally, but you know, the smaller sizes do appeal to a younger person. Um, stylish button front crop top with straps and princess seams at the front and back skirt pants and shorts have center front seams. I'd hope so. <laughs> and fly front zipper closure pants and shorts include belt with button detail and back patch pockets. I'm sure that note was mostly for the skirt, but it was funny to consider pants with no center front seam. Okay. Yeah, this is, I mean, I'm into the seventies right now. I'm just feeling the seventies vibe and this is giving me like festival seventies all day long. Um, you do have this top, which isn't revolutionary in terms of like the design. It's just a princess seam with a thick strap, you know, sewn onto it. Nothing super special there. Those of you that have been making corsets for any time at all, probably made this a thousand times. Um, the pant is your trouser style pant, right? With the slash pocket, fly front zipper, and then the front seam. Um, what makes it kind of interesting are these little tabs, which serve no purpose other than to tie it all in together. So the short has a cuff, which I don't know about how I feel about that, but this little jean skirt, are you kidding me? So cute. No tabs on it, but it does have still the little princess seamed situation. There's the top, there's the short. The skirt is really, really cute. I want to see the backs. Okay. 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 Some thoughts. This is too long on her, right? You can see that's why all this bubbling is happening here. Again, I think that the big four patterns are already long waisted. So for those of us that are short waisted, we have to alter it Anyways, but I think those of you that are regular wasted, <laughs> average wasted, what would the term be? Um, probably would have to shorten one of like something like this as well. So it's important to check your length uh, measurements just as much as you check your circumferences as well. And then the pant, I mean, hello crotch curve. This looks pretty good. I'm not getting like wedgy vibes. It's, it's, it's borderline. Okay. We could do with a little bit of scoopage, but, um, it looks pretty good. And then you have that top stitch seam or the flat felt seam here, just like the front. When you have seams in the front and the back along the center of the leg, it really does allow you to let out and take in. If you have a bigger calf or a fuller bum, there's a lot of great fitting opportunity there, but these are sitting at her high hip. These are not high-waisted pants. Okay, so chambray, cotton blends, denim, lightweight denim, lightweight twill, linen blends. I can also see this in the fall and winter as a wool situation with some lining. Um, tweed, you know, this could be like a year-round thing for you. 
Um, you need buttons. I'm assuming jeans buttons, but maybe not. Zipper. And more buttons. So the... Yep, finished garment measurements are going to be in the instructions. They're not going to give them to us here. Maybe because there's so many different parts. I don't know why. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Okay, let's look at the line drawings really quick just to make sure. Yeah, I just think that would be such a fun, like, little set. I'm not necessarily a pants person. I mean, I'll wear jeans, obviously, but maybe not make, I don't know. I don't know. But shorts, a denim skirt for sure. And this little top, especially if I could find, do they still make, does De, uh, Liberty still make denim? Do they still do their prints in denim? Um, I remember when we went to New York City once, um, several years back now, um, one of the, the, of the people in our group found Liberty denim and she paid a pretty penny for it, but it was stunning. And I can just imagine that floral all over. Yeah, I would want to find something other than blue denim for this. But that's just me because I like to be special. Okay. Yeah, that's really cute. Really fun. Okay. Now we have, okay, this is actually something I've been looking for in ready to wear. And I'm finding them at some boutiques, but man, they are overpriced. And it's the concept of this little duster. Now, I would obviously, probably most of the time, <laughs> wear mine with a shirt underneath. Um, but they do add such a fun light layer um, just to give my like tank tops and all of those like strapless tops more life in the fall and spring. Um, it's too cold to wear no sleeves, but too much to wear like a whole sleeve. So I've been looking for dusters and again, very 70s aesthetic, right? Um, so that's what popped in my, my mind. So I'm glad to see this here. And let's see if I can muster up enough courage to work with one of these sheer lightweight chiffon numbers to, <laughs> to make my own. That would be the only annoying part. All right. So we've got an eight to 16 and an 18 to 26 on this. All right. Mrs. Dusters in three lengths have a deep V neckline lined bodice. Interesting. I actually kind of really love that. Um, tie front closure and bust gathers. Okay, so it is more of like, okay, not what I thought it was. I think what I'm looking for is more of just like an open front cardigan made out of lightweight fabric. This feels more like, yes, this is meant to be an actual top, which is so freaking cool. I don't know that I'm cool enough for it though. Okay, keep reading. Um, View A has self ruffle detail self oh self ruffle detail yeah okay i know what that means view a and b have elastic at sleeves view c has long flared sleeves oh my goodness see how it's like a it's like a dress really that's open in the front and i guess yeah you wear it with like a little bra top underneath or a little crop top maybe if the jeans were a little bit more high rise. I don't know. This feels like a lot like showing the belly button. I don't know about that. Not at my age, not at, well, it's not even an age thing. It's more of like a comfort level lifestyle. Like I'm not going to target with my belly button now. I'm just not. And I don't go anywhere like where belly buttons are out a lot. Other people's belly buttons. <laughs> Like the club, like I'm not going to the clubs, okay? Like I just, I'm not a clubber. I'm just not. <laughs> um, okay, but then it has sleeve options and then different like little details for the front. So this one has a ruffle, this one has nothing. And then this one is actually closed in the front, I think. Or it's just short, I don't know. I think it's really cool. Man, I wish I had like a vacation home. Anybody want to go half seas on a vacation home? Actually, these days, probably like one eighth seas. We got eight people together on a vacation home together. What do you think? I'll set up the sewing room. Okay, 
Um, cool. I really like that. That is fun. That feels fresh, right? That feels like now, even though it is kind of a callback to the 70s too. I know, I'm sure so many of you are like, I had one of these when I was in high school or whatever it is, or, well, too bad you didn't keep it because it would have been cool again. Yeah, there's actually really a lot of like construction detail here that gives this like a lot of bang for the buck. Like you have this shaped bus line with the bust darts. I think this is a dart in the back as well, along with some gathers in the back. Um, and then, you know, the whole bodice is lined, so you don't really have to contend with like seam allowance or uh, raw seams because all of this is going to get encased. I think it's really freaking cool. This one you have to be careful. This is borderline skater, ice skater, borderline, what else, what other vibe am I getting? Like, uh, I just watched last year, oh shoot, the, the series based on the Adams Family, but the um, the girl, whatever, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, her mom. Like, I'm getting her mom's, like, you can make a costume for her mom out of this one. Just longer. Yeah, uh, yeah, this could go costumey, I think. But I do have some of those sheer weights. Like, what else am I going to use those for, right? Like, I bought them a long time ago thinking, I didn't know what I was thinking. I didn't know any better. Um, so I should, I should put them to good use, right? Okay, here's another, like, okay, you know, it's all right. Kind of seen it before. Mrs. Top with sleeve variations, 6 to 14 and 16 to 24. Lightweight and easy to wear silhouette, that's true. Makes it the top you're sure to wear time and time again, also true. Top features a deep V-neckline with slight gathers at shoulder yoke. Sleeve options include long sleeves with slits and puff sleeves with elastic at hem or ruffle hem. Okay, so there are some things that are working for this. One is it's peplum, and peplum is having a moment. Peplum's coming back. Um, this is a little bit of like a prairie peplum versus a 90s peplum, but, you know, it's coming back. Then we have the three different neckline options, I guess you call it. We have the little bows, we have nothing, and then we have the little buttons. So that's some fun variation there, and then you have your sleeves. Um, this one feels slightly, like ever so slightly, a little bit too short in the shoulder on the bodice. Like I want it to come out just a little bit more and then we wouldn't get any of these pulls. The ruffle on the elastic here is really doing a lot of work to help that not look so bad. Um, but yeah, the rest of it is really just kind of sweet. Maybe this is just one of those things where it's just not my style, I guess. I don't know. That's starting to look cute. That, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about those little ties there. That feels like a garbage bag. Maybe that one's a little bit better if it's not in the V. Yeah, I just, I haven't really seen that a bunch, like on my, you know, fashion research if you want to even call it that I don't not seeing this style of shirt maybe like last year or two years ago when the um it was like a piratey kind of thing happening you know where you saw this sleeve a whole bunch especially the three-quarter version of this sleeve is also a very specific choice so and if this neckline is anything like that um dress that we just sewed together for the sew along that I just did those are a beast they do look really pretty in the end but man they are hard to sew yeah and then it just ties in the back so these things here are loose this right here is like a tie it's loose I don't know what it's like under that maybe the line drawings will show us I mean it's okay it's okay I'm, it's not one of those that I'm going to remember though you know Batik, chambray, cottons, gauze, rayons, silky types, wall. I mean, truly anything woven. Um, maybe cutting off at the mid-weight category. 
um, elastic, single fold bias, buttons, and more bias tape for your notions list, depending on which view. 6 to 24, we went over that. And then it's going to be pretty roomy everywhere because you can see there is not a seam under here. So if you don't tie it up, it's just a boxy top. Yeah, I don't, that feels like, oh, it, I don't know what happened with that. Maybe they were going in a certain direction and then just changed paths or something. But yeah, there's a good six inches of ease in the bust and they're not even giving finished measurements for the waist at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't not like it. I just don't know if I'm going to spend the time it would take to make something that looks like this in the end. <laughs> that sounds really mean. You know what I'm saying though? Like, yeah, no. Okay, so here we have Mimi's pattern. How come sometimes her patterns are like the very first ones and sometimes they're like buried way, way, way down here? Um, these are four to 12 and 12 to 20. So the smallest of the small on the size range. Knit dresses in two lengths. Simple but never plain. This collar knit dress in two lengths has dropped shoulders, short sleeves with top stitching at sleeve hem and back vent for a VB dress. Yeah, I think we can tell that Mimi's busy, right? Um, she's running, like, I don't remember what her job title is, but she has some big title at the big four. She's doing no me patterns. She's got this. She's got her school. She's got a lot going on. And I think the simplicity of her patterns lately is reflected in the amount of time she's having to devote to this portion of her role. Um, I, th I feel like, I feel like the last collection was something very boxy, straight, very few seams as well. Not that it's not cute. Just simple. Simple for her, you know? She usually goes, like, very detailed. So we've got this, like, placket, almost like a polo, like a polo shirt, um, into a collar. This is all one. All one piece. There's no sleeve here. No darts, no nothing. It's just a column. You can also see it here. Bet it's comfy. I bet it's comfy, that's for sure. Yeah, literally no shaping anywhere. Oh, good. We do have another version in the women's. Okay. Um,. No darting, no nothing. In the long version, we do have a pleat in the back. And then the short version does not have that, but they both have the center back seam. So I guess you could do a little bit of shaping in there, but not too much. So stretch only, sorry, knit, what? Stretch knits only, such as double knit interlock jersey and lightweight ponty. See, pick a knit rule. Okay. And then the Mrs. version goes from a 29 and a half bust to 42. I'm going to base mine off the hip because that's the biggest part of me. Um, so 31 and a half to 44. And there's three inches of ease in the hip, 10 or so in the waist, and four, three or four in the bust. Yeah, I really don't hate it. Again, it's like one of those things, it's simple. But I don't see any other patterns like this. And if you were to just throw on a little like woven belt or you make a self belt for that matter, um, it could be a really fun just like tool around dress. I'm not seeing it so much in the sweater knit. I'm also not seeing it like dressed up with wedges. I'm seeing it more as like with sneakers, but in like I'm seeing like a polo. I'm seeing like a polo dress. You know, like uh, PK knit, I guess. Is that what that would be? I don't know. I don't know what polos are made from, but that cottony polo stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Um, right? I think that could be really cute. Okay. Go Mimi. And then the women's version is where? Here. So again, same pattern. 
just goes from size 20 to 28 and then 30 to 38. So her patterns run the entire spectrum, four to 38, every single one, every single size, big four, drafts four, Mimi's patterns include. So you can always count on that. Let's see what kind of fabrics they use for hers. Yeah, they use that same rib knit on hers. I don't know which length I like better. What kind of fabric is this? Yeah, that feels like a ponty. We have doo -doo -doo -doo, this little number here, which is just screaming my name. I love dresses like this. It's like fit and flare, but like disguised, right? It has shaping but you don't know, you don't really notice it, but you do, you know? Um, sizes eight to 16 and then 18 to 26 on the size range here. Dresses with half button placket have spread collar. Do we, what's that? What's a spread collar versus other collar? Inverted box pleat, sleeve bands, side seam pockets, and short or long sleeve options. View A and B have self tie on sleeves. Something about this like 70s nod, I just love. I feel really girly in them. I don't know why. I, I've just always been drawn to little dresses like this that have like a lot of flair to them. They're very, they have a lot of personality. And maybe that's what I like about them. Um, okay, so we've got the collar and the placket. And then, oh, it's a raglan. Hello, love that. And then you have this very voluminous sleeve on A. B is what she's wearing. So kind of a standard button, um, button down, but with a little tie here, which I don't know about that. And then C, which is just a regular short sleeve. Love, this is definitely coming home with me at the next sale. just is a matter of what fabric am I going to use for it. You don't have to worry about fit too much. It's not too precious to wear. You know what I mean? Like super easy. I love stuff like that. So chambray, cotton long, cotton blends, Swiss dot, eyelet, of course, gingham, absolutely. Linen blends, pop blends, seersucker, all of your midweights. Wovens. You have a lining somewhere. Um... The lining is not that much. So maybe just for the collar, I'm thinking. And then, like I said, you don't really have to worry about fit too much. The bust is really the only thing that is going to matter. And the bust has six and a half inches of ease in it. So there's a lot of room, wiggle room there too. Um, and it can use up a lot of fun, different fabrics. Which makes it really special. This is going to be one of those ones that's the, the, I spend the least amount of time talking about. But it'll make the biggest impact in my mind. And maybe yours too. Yeah, there's, I don't know what, about, what it is about it. It's just, I don't know, fun. Fun and flirty. Comfortable. Checks all the boxes. Okay, this is a fun top. Like I said, look out for peplums, right? Peplums are coming back. Um, this is a Mrs. Top in sizes 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Tops in four styles have elastic at shoulders, neckline, and sleeves. View B is a crop top. View C has a subtle cutout under the bust. View C and D have peplum gathers into front waistband and smocking. Is it really smocking, though? We will see. Along the back for a universally <laughs> flattering and feminine fit. Okay, this is very promising. So, view A is your regular top with a three-quarter sleeve. And I think all the sleeves have this little, like, uh, pleat detail. Or is it a dart? I don't know. Something in there detail. Then you have view A with a little bit of elastic to make it like a crop top. Also really cute. View C is what she's wearing. And view D 
I don't know the difference between C and D. So, yeah, no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, the cutout is there, but it's modest, right? So if you're like, eh, I don't know about cutouts. I mean, the cutouts are, are definitely still a thing, and I think they'll be around for a long, long time. Um, this might be a good way for you to kind of like ease into it. You know, it's not showing a belly button. It's not showing under boob. Like, it's very safe. Um, this is also one of those, one thing I do love about peplums is it's really easy to extend this into a dress. And then you have a really cute dress in addition to all the wonderful tops too. So there's the most basic, easy top. Then you have crop top. Then you have the peplum versions. Oh, View D doesn't have the cutout. Got it. Okay, so that's not smocking. Or is that smock? Wait. I'm thinking of shirring. So is this smocking and shirring uses the elastic thread and smocking uses smocking? <laughs> that might actually be what's going on here, which, okay. You could easily, if this is a separate panel, you could also just do the shirring through there too, if you're familiar with how that works. I have a feeling this stays up on the shoulder. I'm not getting the feeling that it's being, that it falls down really easily which is good. That's the annoying thing about these kind of like wide, wide open in the front and the back tops. And then you're going to go for all your stable mid weights. I'm sure this one could probably stand with a little bit of flounciness, but chambray, cotton blends, gingham, linen blends, and poplin. And then interfacing for C and D, which is for the little smocked part is just a lightweight fusible. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, all right, bias tape, elastic. I think that's gonna be elastic. Elastic zipper, invisible zipper for C. Boo. <laughs> just make this a casing, the waistband and a casing and put elastic in there. Um, yeah, C and D both have an invisible zipper, I think, along the side. All right. And then, yeah, really roomy top. So, don't really need to talk about fit that much. But, yeah, so there's the back of A and B. Yeah, so this, par this portion here could easily be shirred if you didn't want to smock it. And then where's the zipper? Oh, here she is right here on the side. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That'll be one of those ones like game time decision when I'm there at the store and they're $1.99 or whatever they're on sale for if I'm going to throw it in the cart or not. Okay. Mrs. Skirt in three lengths. Again, prairie skirt, elastic with the tears. Again, I feel like we've kind of done this. Uh, 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Pull on skirt with tears and pin tucks. Comes in three links. Mid calf, knee, and mini. View C has purchased, purchased lace trim at the hem. I mean, the pin tucks are kind of cool, I guess. It's just like, if I'm going to throw on something for the day, it's going to be that other collared dress versus a skirt and a top. You know, that's just, I guess, more my style or lifestyle. I don't know. It's not not cute. It's just, I don't know. I just don't, I don't gravitate toward, well, I don't really gravitate toward skirts anyways. Maybe I should. I'm just rethinking life here. Yeah, I mean... I gotta say, it is one of those things that you would see, again, in a boutique or a Nordstrom or whatever, that would be like $400. You know, imagine like Farm Rio or something. Anthropology, you know, and it'd be cost an arm and a leg that we could make for next to nothing. I don't know. Maybe I should give it a try. Maybe I should kind of branch out of my comfort zone a little bit. Leave the top, right, the last top that I'm iffy on anyways, and make this instead. <laughs> chambray lawn poplin rayons silky types soft cotton types wall yeah 
And how much of it do you need? Four yards, good grief. Oh, yeah, four yards for the long one? Oh, no. Well, that might just not happen then. <laughs> Elastic and then the lace trim. Golly, four. That really says four and a half yards. Skirt B isn't as bad. Only two in some odd yards. I can't read the fractions. It's too small. Again, you don't have to worry about fitting. Hmm. Maybe. It's a maybe. We'll see if it sticks in my brain after all this time. I can't believe. I guess that does take a whole extra yard. Which one is she wearing? Of course she's wearing A. I want A. I want the four yard one. I'm going to have to find some really good clearance fabric. If I could find something for like $5 a yard, I bet Fashion Fabrics Club or one of those places has some good deals on. I mean, it's not like the fabric has to be silk or anything. It's just plain cotton. Okay, here's Norris. This is Mimi's husband. He has been coming up with such cool stuff lately. I have a couple of male students that I'm teaching um, here locally in person. And I keep bringing up his patterns because they're just so cool. Now... I can't say my students are like agreeing with me. Like the diaper shorts from last time I thought were the coolest. And I thought for sure one of my students was going to be like, yes, absolutely. Let's learn how to make that. And he was like, um, I don't know about that. Like a little bit too fashion forward. I maybe was putting a little bit projecting myself onto him a little bit too much. Like, please, I really want to make these shorts. Um, but he's been doing some really cool stuff for menswear. So I'm really excited to see that. All right. So... Oh, the, the men's op sizing 34 to 42 and 44 to 52. I think that's just your waist, right? Um, relaxed fit button front shirts have convertible collar. What does that mean? Front pockets, side slits, back yoke, and long or short sleeves. Pull on shorts and two links have elastic waistband, drawstring ties, and pockets. I mean, it really is good for beginners. I'll bring this one up again and see what the guys say about it. But yeah, super cool. Men's button down with a little hooky thing. I mean, what are they supposed to do? Take this off and hang it up like at the door? I don't never understood what this was for. Maybe on like the fishing shirts, it would make sense because you'd get it wet and you'd want to hang it up and let it air dry while you're on the boat. But like, there's no purpose for these reg other than that, right? <laughs> um, and then you have your pull-on short. I do like the the kind of sizes of the notches here. That feels very updated and cool and fresh. Okay. Oh, a little split hem. Cute. Yeah, I love the little set. This does remind me of that... Um, Rachel Comey pattern from maybe fall of last year. Remember, it's like burgundy color, but it's similar, like short and boxy top combo. So, batik chambray, which I think is what he's used. Cotton, linen, poplin, and tinsel, which is like a rayon. C and D also in nylon tech fabrics. So, I guess like board shorts. And then you need buttons. And elastic. And then the waist measurement does not correspond with the size. I don't know why I thought that. So there's four inches of ease in the waist, it looks like. Select pattern based on, uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Okay. Neck band. Oh, cool. They get to measure their necks. You know how men's shirts have that at the store? Why don't we do that? I have a little neck. <laughs> okay, there's the top. Here's the shorts. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, here's Mimi's second pattern. 
tops and cargo pants. This is the Mrs. version, but I'm assuming she has the women's version too. Just as comfy as they are effortless to style, racer back style knit tops are cropped and have center front zipper or slit opening at neckline. Okay, uh-huh. Cargo pants have button fly closure and oversized patch pockets. Yeah, leaning into her like, she has a very, two very distinct styles, right? She has like the glam bodycon, you know, vibe. And then she also has this like, Jenny from the block, like streetwear, like kind of rugged aesthetic that she dresses up to be glam. But I mean, it's cargo shorts and a zip front top. So, I mean, that's pretty, pretty like, I don't know, like rugged, I guess. Right. But the pants have a drop crotch. That's, that's a choice. Um, you have the open, like a slit opening or you have your little zipper here really well fitted through the shoulder cute little neckline high neckline yeah she's taken like a classic with i mean she's done trousers she's done cargo pants and she's just kind of like combined them and made them even more kind of like street with the uh, dropped crotch. Oh, it is a racer back. Remember, this is knit, okay? This is knit and this is woven. So remember that, it's like a t-shirt. Yeah, look at the pants seam line. That's really cool. Remember the, who, uh, was it one of the Nomi patterns that had the, I feel like it was one of the menswear patterns that had that on it. I feel like I could make that work. I think I would do a tighter fitting top though, if it were me. Um, oops. Stretch knits such as interlock jersey rib knit, waffle knit, and then for the pants, Denim, linen, poplin, sateen, and twill. Uh, the zipper for the top. Seven buttons. Seven buttons. And then some twill tape for the pants. And then the bust has like half an inch of ease. The waist of the pants has three inches of ease so they kind of are a little bit more relaxed and then the hip is like has a lot of ease in the hip too I don't know I think it's really cool I couldn't even see that seam line let's see if we can find it find the seam line yeah none of them are really going to give us that close I mean there it is there but we don't get to see much of it let's go back Yeah, it's like in here somewhere. You really can't see it. Which I guess that makes it better. I don't know. That's how you get that baggy crotch though. I think it's cool. I don't know. I kind of like it. I'm digging it. Oh, oh, that's why in the front it's only this. Y'all probably like that less. <laughs> I'm imagining you guys at home going... That looks like a incontinence pad attached to your pants, right? It is giving, it's giving weird diaper pad vibes. I get that. But when you look at the pants like on, they don't look like that. <laughs> oh man. Sometimes when I film these videos later at night than I'd like to, we get some really interesting commentary so if you're just waking up and you got your coffee welcome to the morning where we're talking about incontinence okay so now we have some mrs pants 4 to 12 and 14 to 22 this honestly might be what i think i want the mimi pants 
to look like. I want something cool and something interesting. The Mimi ones might be a little bit too cool, whereas these are like safe. They're cool, but safe. Um, these have front pleats and contour waistband, pants feature, fly front zipper closure, side seam pockets, back darts, and single welt back pocket. So see how it's like one of them like folds over and one of them makes this like little baby fold over or maybe it's the same. It just looks different because she has her weight onto her hip. But in this whole outfit in general with like the button down, slouchy, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Or you can do this little pleated version that doesn't cross over. And then C and B, how are they different? One's a print and one's a solid? One's shorter, maybe. That's just really cool and interesting to me. And I love that version, too. That would be just as beautiful. But, yeah, imagine that in, like, a bottom weight that has, like, a little bit of, like, drape to it. Almost like a suiting, maybe. I don't know. That could just be really cool in so many things. Okay, so here's the back. So it's a very wide, loose leg. Like you can't even tell she has a butt in there anywhere. It's just coming off of her butt apex straight down. Um, there is a defined crotch curve though, which is good. Maybe a little bit too much fabric through here for her, um, but it's really not bad. If my pants looked like this, I'd be like, okay, passable, good, we're moving on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, B and C are two different lengths. And then cotton blends, lightweight twill, lightweight wool blends, linen blends, and stretch wovens. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, I'm picturing something a little bit drapier. Not, not silky type drapey, not, not shally drapey, not flowy drapey, but something with a little bit of like, I don't know, like movement to it. Maybe that's what I'm trying to, the word I'm trying to think of. Um, there is a little bit of lining for the waistband, I think. Lightweight fusible interfacing. Zipper. Hook and eye, or hook and bar. And then a button. And then the sizing on the hips is 31 and a half to 46 with five inches of ease. And then about two yards of fabric for all versions. Yeah, for me, this season, this collection is going to be between Mimi G and this one. And maybe since the top of the Mimi G one is really kind of like uh, not, not something I loved, and I do really like these also, maybe these would be the winner just, just out of getting more use out of this pattern than the than Mimi's. But both kind of like in the same vein, right? Like cool, chic, elevated trouser. All right, I guess this does not come in women's. Okay, so just one of her patterns does then. All right, and then we're gonna, I struggle through the vintage patterns, but I'm here for you vintage girlies. I'm trying the best that I can. You guys are helping me out in the comments. I'm learning a lot. Um, but sometimes when I review the vintage patterns, I don't know what half the things mean. So if I sound like a bumbling moron over here, <laughs> I apologize. I just have I don't I never got into the vintage stuff, so I don't know what all the terms mean, but we try the best we can, okay? So this is a 1950s dress, 6 to 14, 16 to 24, flattering vintage. I know what both of those words mean princess style dress, flares out from the waistline and features narrow shoulder ties. Perfect. The upper Bodice edge is notched at center front seam. View B features contrasting shoulder ties and bodice trim. The pert little jacket has a small round collar. The three quarter length kimono sleeves can be worn pushed up. Okay, I think I know what all those words mean. So it's interesting because it is a fit and flare, right? But there's no waistline. So the princess seams are doing all the work here. 
So when you get these pattern pieces, they're going to be like, boom, boom. They're going to be very, very curved. And you're going to be putting conve convex and concave curves together. So this is a bit of a beast to sew, um, especially if your bust is a lot wider than your hip, than your waist. But, I mean, really beautiful. So you've got the little notch that they mentioned here, shoulder ties. And then this little jacket, pert jacket, um, has a shoulder dart, a little collar, and then you can either push up your sleeves or leave them down. Oh, and then B also had some trim, I guess, up here instead of the little notch. So that's that. And they're recommending, usually these are like mid-weight wovens, cotton, fail, linen types, poplin, rayon, silky types, and taffeta. Yeah. Also in brocade and velveteen. So you can make it for the fall, winter, holidays, all of that. Um, I could kind of see it as like a summer dress too in like a seersucker or something. That could be sweet. And then there's some interfacing. So you need seam binding, zipper, hook and eye, and shoulder pads. All very standard. But the interesting part about this is there's only two inches of ease in that waist. Like you are not eating chicken fingers that day. <laughs> we are not getting inflamed in any way. There's no bloating happening. Nothing. <laughs> It is going to be a salad. It is going to be water and probably not even that much water. Um, two inches of ease in the waist. That's it. That's all you get. Um, and then in the bust, there is also two inches of ease. So and then the waist is, I mean, the hip is very, very large. So, so yeah. Yay. I feel good. I actually got through a vintage pattern without being so confused. Oh, you also have, now this is not a lapped zipper. It's a Oh, shoot. Where you have, like, the two little flaps that come over. What's that called? That zipper. That's what that is. Yeah. This is really sweet. It really packs a punch. It's hard to tell just from the line drawings and the illustrations, but when you see the pattern pieces and how much shape there is to each piece and knowing what, like, how that transforms into 3D... It's really cool. You could also move this zipper to the back too, I think. If you didn't want to do the lapped zipper or the, gosh, what is that called? Anyways. All right. So that I think is the end. Yeah. That is the end of Simplicity Spring. What I honestly, like there's some really good stuff happening here. Uh, you know, I'm getting this dress. The pants and the skirt are strong maybes. The duster is a strong maybe. Mimi's dress pattern for sure. I also really loved this little number. Like not enough time in the world to make any of these, but, or make all of them. But there's some really good stuff in here. Do you guys remember like back just a few years ago during the pandemic where we would get through these and at the end I'd be like, there was really nothing I liked. Um, so... I'm happy to see we are making forward progress with the big four. Um, I think the addition of Mimi kind of shaking things up um, has really, really helped. So that's good to see. But that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Please let me know what you think of this. Leave it in the comments. It's like my favorite part is coming back to the videos and seeing what you guys have to say. I read all of them. I try to reply to most of them. Um, but I just love knowing like what you're going to be looking out for, which ones caught your eye, which ones you were like absolutely not. And if you can help me make heads or tails of some of my indecision, that's always helpful too. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, that's it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye.